and welcome to RCGC Today. I'm your host, Diane Carbonetta. In November, seven distinguished alumni were added to the Rowan College at Gloucester County Alumni Hall of Fame. Here's a look at the 2017 inductees. Cody Miller, director of Rowan College Foundation at Gloucester County and Alumni Affairs, introduced inductee Michelle Epifani. Michelle has a strong technology and business background, enhanced by an associate degree in computer science from Gloucester County College and a bachelor's degree in liberal arts and sciences from Rowan University. Community service has been a hallmark of her life, as evidenced by her work on multiple zoning boards and with the Volunteer Center of South Jersey, the Girl Scouts, the Gloucester County Special Services Education Foundation, and Clearview Regional High School. Michelle has served as Executive Director for the Volunteer Center of New Jersey since 2015, where she has worked tirelessly to promote a strong online presence. Under her leadership, the center launched a mobile-friendly online database that now boasts over 2,000 registered volunteers, servicing more than 40 nonprofits across seven counties. Dr. Frederick Keating, President of Rowan College at Gloucester County, introduced inductee Lucinda Florio. Born in Lafayette, Indiana, Lucinda moved to New Jersey at an early age and considers the state to be her home. She graduated from Gloucester County College in 1973 with her associate's degree in education, then transferred to Glassboro State College to complete a dual major in early childhood education and elementary education before accepting a position teaching preschool. From there, Lucinda moved on to teach first and third grade for 10 years, during which time she received the Governor's Teacher's Recognition Award and the Teacher of the Year Award. She met her husband, James Florio, when he moved into the apartment above her after a close election to Congress. Upon becoming First Lady of New Jersey, the entire state became Mrs. Florio's classroom, with abundant opportunities to support children and families. She has volunteered for many years to try to make a difference in the communities where she has lived, and she continues to do so. John Mondelli, Operations Manager for Gloucester County Educational Network, introduced inductee Joseph Helder. A 10-time Mid-Atlantic Emmy Award winner, he has spent more than 20 years working in sports television. Joseph is a graduate of West Effort High School and landed his first job in the industry during his freshman year at Gloucester County College. After receiving his associate degree in Arts and Sciences, he accepted a position with ESPN. From ESPN, Joseph began to climb the career ladder, moving to Ross Productions and then the Comcast Network, where he won his first Emmy for a feature on a local athlete who died tragically in the World Trade Center attacks. In 2005, he was hired by the Philadelphia Eagles' own Eagles Television Network, where he continues to work as a producer and videographer. During his 12 years with the Eagles, Joseph has been awarded an additional nine Emmys, including his most recent in September 2017 in the category of sports photographer. Randy Davidson, Executive Director of Institutional Advancement, introduced inductee Patricia S. Madden. Patricia is an innovative nurse professional who has worked to connect Southern New Jersey-based Jefferson Health with its surrounding communities through outreach and interaction. Patricia received her associate's degree in nursing at Gloucester County College before continuing to Widener University to earn her bachelor's degree in nursing and then Drexel University for her master's degree in nursing. She is currently enrolled in a doctor of nursing practice program with a concentration in nursing leadership. A registered nurse for more than 28 years, Patricia has worked in many healthcare environments from critical care to ambulatory care and currently serves as director of nursing at Jefferson Health in Washington Township, New Jersey. Charles Harkins, Professor of English and Educational Coordinator for RCGC's Liberal Arts Division, introduced inductee Anna Stewart Miller. Anna is a proud graduate of Glassboro High School. She holds an associate's degree in business administration from Gloucester County College and a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration from Eastern Kentucky University. Anna has been a member of the Glassboro Council since 2013. She is chair of the Health, Welfare and Recreation Committee and serves on the Public Safety and Water and Sewer Committees. She is also liaison to the Library, Human Services and Glassboro Housing Authority, community liaison for Vitus Healthcare, and a volunteer track coach for the Glassboro Park and Recreation Track and Field. Through a variety of committees and public service projects, she works tirelessly towards realizing her vision for Glassboro, which includes supporting small business growth and promoting youth involvement to foster a sense of community within the town. Randy Davidson, Executive Director of Institutional Advancement, introduced inductee Stephen G. Selfridge. Stephen is known for building and leading high-performance multinational teams and uniting parties on a common mission. 
a graduate of Woodbury High School, he received his associate's degree in business administration from Gloucester County College before transferring to Rutgers School of Business Camden to complete his education. Stephen has a 35-year history of establishing and growing a variety of businesses and has demonstrated success in increasing profits and market share, having worked across six continents in highly competitive global industries. He is currently president of Government Services, a Day and Zimmerman company and a trusted provider of integrated security and critical infrastructure services, enabling security missions in support of the U.S. government domestically and abroad. Stephen serves on the Leadership Council at the Rutgers School of Business Camden and is chair of the Lord's Health Foundation Board. Fred Madden, Dean of the Law and Justice Division, introduced Andrea Zimmerman Lomas, sister of the late Bertram T. Zimmerman III. Bertram was born in Camden, New Jersey. He was a graduate of Highland High School, Gloucester County College, and Rutgers University. An avid athlete, Bertram played baseball for his high school and college teams and was a member of Gloucester County College's first NJCAA National Championship baseball team in 1992. He served as a special police officer for Gloucester Township and then as an officer for Evesham Township before enlisting in the New Jersey State Police on March 14, 2001 as a member of the 119th class stationed at Woodbine in Troop A. Trooper Zimmerman served for two years and 11 months before he died as a result of injuries received in the performance of duty while working as part of a team of state police troopers and detectives investigating a string of armed robberies at area convenience stores. His service with the New Jersey State Police was characterized by loyalty, fearless performance of his duty, and a faithful and honorable devotion to the principles of the New Jersey State Police. All of us here at RCGC today and at Rowan College at Gloucester County would like to congratulate the 2017 inductees. We'll be back in a moment with more RCGC today. Discover a better way to pursue your education at Rowan College at Gloucester County. RCGC offers in-demand degrees, flexible schedule choices, and the best tuition value in New Jersey. Visit rcgc.edu to register. Welcome back to RCGC Today. I'm Brian Rowan, Executive Director of Athletics here at the college. Joined today by Katie Dunn, a uh, member of our women's basketball team, women's track and field team, and also a member of our women's cross country team just this year, and also the head women's basketball coach, Rich Cooper. Thanks for joining us here on our sports segment. Uh, Katie, one of the reasons we asked you to come on, uh, three sport athlete here at the intercollegiate level, and uh, you were recruited by Coach Cooper to come in and play basketball. You also joined the track team. And then this year, due to some injuries and unforeseen events, you went out and helped us in, in cross country. Uh, tell us a little bit, now that the fall season's over, uh, about that cross country experience. You went in, you helped the team do very well. Uh, how, about, how, how was that for you? Um, it was an awesome experience. It was something I've never done before, and I've done a lot of sports in my time. Uh, cross country, we traveled to Massachusetts and we became region champs and that was really exciting because it was my first region champ champion thing. <laughs> but it was great that you filled in and helped the team and the program and that's one of the reasons we're very proud of having you in our, in our program. One of the things we'd like to have many more female student athletes and male participate in multi-sports is really important. Um, one of the things that's got to be tough is to balance that. You know, you came here, like we said, to play basketball. You also did track. How are you find, uh, and you're also an excellent student. So how do you find the time and that balance in your, in your day to be able to do all those things successfully? Uh, well, the majority of my classes end around 12 or 1 o'clock, and most of my practices don't start until 3. So I do my homework and my studies between my last class and before I have practice or a game and it works out just fine. <laughs> oh, it seems to be working well for you. Like we said, an excellent top student as well as doing so well for us on the athletic side. Um, basketball season here coming to a conclusion or getting toward the end. What's one of the goals uh, that your team has uh, under Coach Cooper's leadership? Um, we would like to get a home game for playoffs and then after that go right to the region champ and then soon nationals. Right, and it'd be great if we could make it to nationals. I'm sure Coach Cooper 
uh, would be thrilled to be there. Coach, uh, you're one of the folks that nominated Katie. She's going to be our representative at National Association for Girls and Women in Sports Day event. You nominated her. You must be proud of everything she's done, not just for your program, but also branching out to help in some of the other things she does as well. Yeah, she's a natural born leader. Um, I think it showed this year when she decided to help the cross country team out when they had the injuries and other things like that. She took it upon herself to say, I want to be a part of that. So we did talk and she decided she wanted to do it and she went right out and did it. But it's not just on the court. She doesn't just do talking. She shows with her actions, everything she does with her classwork, her grades, um, basketball. You know, she's a natural born leader. She's been a starter for two years. Um, I can't say any other great things about her. She's a great kid. Uh, these are the type of students that, uh, that come in and make a definite impact on our program, uh, program-wide. And, and one of the things, uh, Katie, you took on last year and became a leader in this year is our unified sports program. Uh, we work with the New Jersey Special Olympics every Friday and sometimes beyond that uh, to give uh, students with special needs an opportunity to participate in sports. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, what it's meant for you uh, and, and what you like so much about it. Uh, what I enjoy about it is a lot of people from everywhere just come in and we play a sport with them every Friday and it changes my week. I could have the worst week ever and just go in and play basketball with a bunch of kids. It's just great. And this year I believe you're the treasurer secretary, secretary uh, for that program so you're in a leadership role and uh, obviously uh, all our work with New Jersey Special Olympics very important stuff and we, we commend you on doing that. Now your plans maybe tie into that academically as you move forward next year and we will be disappointed to, uh, <laughs> whenever anybody that's uh, like you leaves but after two years you'll be moving on and uh, what are your plans and, and goals there? Uh, I would like to go to, well, I am going to Rowan, and I'm going to continue my basketball career there. And my first, like my long-term plans are going to be my education major with the minor special ed. Great, great. I'm sure you'll be successful in that, and that's a, a great field to be in. Uh, as our representative for National Association of Girls and Women's in Sports Day, uh, we recently just get, told you you were going to be the nominee. How does that make you feel? Both Coach Cooper and your track and field coach has nominated you. That must be pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, it's actually really exciting. I didn't know I was going to be nominated, so just to know that my basketball coach and my track coach thought I would fit is pretty awesome. Great, and that award, uh, or that nomination goes along with leadership, uh, success on the field or in the track environment, and also academics, so you have uh, you know, that great full package there. Uh, coach, you know, one more thing on basketball as we, as we get wind up the season here. Uh, Katie mentioned trying to get there uh, to the region tournament. What do you think uh, your thoughts on that, on that goal for the team? She said to hopefully make it to Nationals. Well, at the beginning of the year, that was our goal, was to make it all the way to Nationals. Last year, we came really close. Um, probably had one of our worst games we've had all season at the wrong time. So that's our next goal. We, have, we broke the season down in three goals. One was to win this region, which hopefully with a couple of weeks left, we got a chance to do that. Then the next goal was to uh, make it to um, win the region championship and make it to nationals. So we're on track. We just have to keep going. And with players like this, we should be OK. Well, hopefully you two can, uh, can work on that together. And again, I thank you both for joining us here on RCGC today. You can follow all the Roadrunner uh, athletics programs on our social media at RCGC Athletics, at our website, www.rcgc.edu athletics and uh, you'll see these two in action in basketball season and then Katie will continue in track and field. Thanks a lot for joining us. Work around your schedule with Rowan College at Gloucester County's expanding selection of online degrees. Just added business administration degree and an HR management degree. Visit rcgc.edu to register. Welcome back to RCGC Today. Joining us next, we have Assistant Dean of STEM, Dr. Christina Nace, here to tell us about a new initiative designed to increase support for female STEM scholars. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Nace. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're pleased you could be here. So the Women in STEM Academy is one of the college's new initiatives. Can you tell us a little bit about why this academy was created? Sure. Um, well, the academy was created to support our female STEM students. Uh, it's, it, women are still underrepresented in many um, STEM fields, particularly engineering and computer science. So this was just our way of kind of making sure that the people that want to get into the STEM fields can actually get there. 
And you have a number of educational experiences planned as part of this academy, including an ongoing speaker series. What are some of the topics that you were hoping to cover as part of this series? So some of the speakers that we have are coming from transfer schools. So we have um, already this semester, we've had people from Rowan and Rutgers and the Philadelphia College of uh, Osteopathic Medicine. Um, but we also have partners in industry. So we have a lot of local, local people coming to talk about careers and possible, you know, maybe STEM careers that they haven't really thought of before. Um, and then we also will have some people who are going to come and talk about some obstacles that, are, that women in STEM face and how to overcome them. Now, while the uh, Women in STEM Academy definitely has an academic focus, there's also an emphasis on mentoring, networking, and really just women supporting other women. What can you tell us about some of the more social aspects of the Academy? Right, so once a month we host a Women in STEM Cafe where we have free food and drinks and we have faculty and advisors on hand so students can come up and just ask any questions and give some kind of impromptu advising but then they also get to meet each other which is which is really nice because sometimes when you're the only girl in calc 3 you kind of feel alone but maybe there's another one out there that you can find um, what else do we do for support uh, right we're just trying to create that culture of of women supporting women um, so we also have some, some other fun activities that we do as well. So we have field trips planned. We go to uh, the planetarium at Rowan. Uh, we go to the fossil site at Rowan as well. So we reach out to our, our local uh, transfer schools as well and try to plug into some of their groups, some of their student groups. Um, now, your women in STEM students have made a number of visits to some local elementary schools. Can you tell us a little bit about those visits and the purpose behind them? Sure. Um, early exposure to a STEM field is really critical for a lot of students. And so we've been targeting kind of first and second grade uh, because STEM and science isn't really focused a lot in, in those. Well, math is definitely focused. Reading is definitely focused. Um, but science kind of gets pushed to the end of the day where uh, the kids are kind of tired at that point. That's really what I've heard from, from the teachers. And the teachers themselves don't really feel comfortable teaching science. A, a lot of them feel kind of intimidated by it. Um, so what we do is we, we work with the teachers and we kind of align their curriculum with some fun labs to do. Uh, and we kind of can capture that the excitement of, of doing science at a, at a really young age. So our school visits have gotten so popular um, that we had to kind of turn this into a course for our students. So it's all like a real learning opportunity for our education majors. And so in the spring, we're going to offer a, an honors research in STEM education course, where now we can pretty much quadruple the number of school visits we can do. We have um, way more volunteers because now it's, part, it's tied to like a course. And these students get a lot of hands-on experience teaching science. Um, so it's going to be some of our STEM majors, but then also some of our teaching majors which are, you know, they're eventually going to be teachers. So we want to make sure that they have the skills and the confidence to bring into their future classrooms. And how can students find out more about the Women in STEM Academy? Sure. Um, we have our uh, website. It's, it's rcdc.edu slash WSTEM. Uh, you can also come to any of our Women in STEM cafe meetings. So that's the usually the first Wednesday of every month from 10, 15 to 11 in uh, the lobby of Scott Hall. Um, and you can also shoot me an email. Well, it sounds like the Academy is going to provide a lot of great resources and support to women interested in entering STEM fields. Thank you so much for stopping by to fill us in. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be back in a moment with more RCGC Today. Make Rowan Choice your first choice for an affordable residential college experience. You'll enjoy the privileges of a four-year university at a fraction of the cost. Live on Rowan University's Glassboro campus while attending classes through Rowan College at Gloucester County. You'll pay the university's price for room and board while gaining full campus access, including facilities and student activities. All freshman students can enroll for one or two years with tuition and fees assessed at the community college rate. Rowan Choice makes academic achievement affordable. Welcome back to RCGC Today. Rowan College at Gloucester County puts a strong emphasis on giving back to the surrounding community. Here's a look back at some of the various philanthropic efforts led by students, faculty, and staff in 2017. The students, faculty, and staff at RCGC have, have always embraced the concept of giving to those in need. Um, but this year, something that we've seen really increase is the collaboration across campus from different clubs, organizations, and groups, as well as faculty and staff. And it's been really exciting to see how everyone has gotten together and rallied around common causes like the Hurricane Relief Week and our, our Giving Tree initiative, as well as Roadrunners Refuel. 
This fall, our student government organization uh, was really impacted by hearing all the news stories of the devastation from the many hurricanes in the Caribbean and Florida and Texas. They really wanted to figure out what they could do to help contribute to the relief efforts. Once the students figured out where they wanted to send the items that they were going to collect and, and where they wanted to donate their funds, they uh, got together with some other clubs and organizations on campus to organize a week long of fundraising and uh, activities. The students did everything from a Wendy's fundraiser night uh, to a coffee and Danish sale at breakfast. Uh, they, they sold items that they, they made, crafts, and um, they got everyone on campus involved. DECA did a bake sale, so we had some donuts, we had coffee, Wawa funded us coffee, and it went really well. We had our professional development day for faculty and staff uh, during our relief week, and on that day the faculty and staff were very generous in donating, donating money um, to the cause as well. It was really great to see so many different uh, clubs, organizations, as well as faculty and staff uh, get together to support this cause. DECA will definitely do more fundraisers for good causes in the future. Roadrunners Refuel was um, an initiative started by the American Association of Women in Community Colleges, RCGC chapter. Um, when we were having one of our summer meetings, we were talking about ways that we could give back to the students on campus and what they really needed. We thought, what better place to start than charity begins at home with our own students. 40% of students who go to college are hungry. They have either insufficient food or a more serious lack of food, and that of course impacts their ability to learn and to do well. It's very hard to concentrate on your studies when you're focused on your next meal. Where's your next meal coming from? We worked with the campus administration uh, to develop our own food pantry on campus that opened in January of 2017. The food that's available is canned and packaged goods, things that can be eaten on campus with the assistance at the most of a microwave oven. Uh, we had multiple student organizations and groups get involved with fundraisers for Roadrunners Refuel, our math club, as well as our women's soccer team, um, both did very uh, successful food drives. Probably the most fun we had was on Halloween. Uh, the president of our AAWCC, uh, Dr. Linda Hurlbert, uh, came up with the idea of having a reverse trick-or-treat program. Rather than giving out candy like you would expect for trick-or-treaters, we would collect uh, donations for our Roadrunner Refuel food bank and members of AAWCC signed up to dress up as their favorite characters and man the tables and do the collections. And we fared very well with that uh, first time project. So it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Um, in addition, I was contacted at the beginning of the semester uh, by Dean Madden and the Law and Justice Department because their police academy recruits really wanted to find a way to give back to the community. The individuals that had the collection were the members of the basic police academy class, class number 51. They're very diverse and they come from many different backgrounds. We had combat war veterans in the class, or 12 veterans altogether in this class. There are, there's the individuals who were not born in this country that had come here from different cultures that did not have the ability to have necessarily meals on their plate every day, day and night. They were in America now and making a difference. I walked in thinking I was going to go right into their classroom, but instead they needed the whole lobby um, to display the items that they had collected. Boxes were here in the foyer. They kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they used their personal network in the law enforcement community to make a difference in the students here at the college. They collected over 2,000 food items um, in a very short period of time. When I arrived, I was so surprised. There were 15 cases of water, a whole table full of food, 
two giant boxes that needed three people to pick them up. Uh, so it was really overwhelming to see how much uh, they really dedicated um, their time and you know their resources to to make it a successful drive. It was it was just really awesome. I'm very pr proud and pleased that they selected something to benefit the college. In a small way, they said that they had such a great experience here, that they learned so much at the basic police academy, that they wanted to give back to the institution in which uh, had given them so much. And this was a way of them trying to do that, helping someone else that needs a leg up, feeding them. Think about it, something so basic. Uh, it was just, it was so overwhelming uh, to see the generosity of these young police academy recruits. Um, and it really showed just how much they, they care about their community. We have just finished being the beneficiaries of um, an effort by the Student Government Association uh, called the Giving Tree. We told them about some moms that were in a particularly difficult situation and would not be able to have presents for the children this year. And they in turn uh, set up a tree where faculty, staff, and even students could select one ornament and purchase a gift for one of these children that would otherwise not be having a good Christmas. That office identified this year 12 moms who were in need of financial assistance uh, to make the holiday season really special for their children. We were able to support 24 children uh, and make them have a Christmas that they could really remember. The people on this campus who are purchasing these gifts don't know these people and don't see the stories. I'm in a position where I know these people, I meet the people, I know what the stories are, and I also see them when they receive their gifts and how grateful they are, how moved to tears, literally, they are. And I'm always amazed at how generous uh, the staff is here, staff, students, and faculty, in their gifts for these people. And I can just not thank them enough for their generosity, and I can only assure them that the families are very deserving and very appreciative of what they're doing. I feel like we're not just a club. It's a family here. Um, definitely Christmas time, the holidays is. I feel it's more about giving than receiving. We always make cards. Uh, last year, actually, we sent cards to veterans for the holidays and went to Children's Hospital. And I said, we should do that again. And uh, let's make up for the patients that we go sing for. Having a disability myself, I knew kind of a little bit what they thought, uh, the different things and how they work. And to just see the smiles on their face, you know, included in something, um, it gives you that feeling of, wow, you know, I really, I really help somebody. There's always joy in that. No matter how bad it is, if you're helping somebody, you're always feeling good. And I said, hey, you know, it's a nursing home. Uh, what do you guys think about going down there? I talked to my leadership team and they said, yeah, that sounds great. Um, so we went, I think the joy from the patients brought them that joy. Um, we actually had one of our athletes was kind of directing the whole thing. He was like the conductor because he went to music class. Mr. Clark, our director, was handing them the cards as we were singing. To see the smiles on the patients' faces, to see the smiles on my athletes' faces, and, and my and my face, um, that was what it was all about. Um, and then I'm telling you, come back, you know, sing again. I mean, to know that you impacted somebody's life for the better, I mean, that makes the job all worth it. Discover a better way to pursue your education at Rowan College at Gloucester County. RCGC offers in-demand degrees, flexible schedule choices, and the best tuition value in New Jersey. Visit rcgc.edu to register. That's all for this episode of RCGC Today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>